Hey everyone, I'm Case Aiken. Now, when talking about Superman analogs, oftentimes we're talking about characters who are thrust into the role. But in the case of Thor Girl, we're talking about a character who had an even greater destiny, and the role of superhero was more of a diversion, an escape. Thor Girl first appeared during Dan Jurgen's run on Thor, following the hero's return story arc. It's important to note that she is not a female Thor, nor even an Asgardian, but something, naturally, far more powerful. It's also important to note that I'm not talking about Jane Foster's run as Thor in the recent Jason Aaron series, or even in Thor Love and Thunder. I will note, though, that there are some interesting similarities between Jason Aaron's Thor run and Jurgens' run that no one ever seems to talk about because the very different J. Michael Straczynski run came in between. Now, I'm also not talking about the time when Thor was transformed into a female by Odin in the Earth-X timeline. Apparently, Thor has been a girl a lot, is I guess what I'm trying to say, but Thor girl is not Thor. Rather, I'm talking about the designate, Tarine, a foretold cosmic being who rivals Odin and Zeus, but sought guidance, so she took a mundane form. Mundane in this case being a distaff Asgardian god. It's a scale thing. In comparison, Thor was a downgrade for her. Using her vast cosmic powers, she copied Thor's abilities pretty exactly, because she was that powerful. It's kind of like a modern high-end gaming PC acting as an emulator for an NES. So she was easily able to emulate Thor's Asgardian physique and his ability to turn into a human. Now at the time, Thor's moonlighting as Jake Olsen, a paramedic, and so she pretended to be his human cousin, Tara, when the two weren't swinging hammers around. Eventually, after saving the timeline by preventing a future Thor from becoming a dictatorial deity, she and Thor battled Thanos, and she burned out her powers, leaving her as just a rogue goddess of thunder for the time. After that, she popped up in the initiative, becoming friends with Ultra Girl, who we've talked about before. Except she didn't, because she was actually a Skrull impersonator, and this was part of the Secret Invasion storyline. After that, she sought counseling to deal with the trauma of her abduction, and then during the Fear Itself story arc, she came to blows with the US government when she was mistaken for an Asgardian invader. As a result, her full powers activated, but she also became disgusted with humanity, and has, as far as I know, left Earth and has not been seen again. As far as her design goes, I like the stripe design for heroes in general, though I know from cosplay experience that it's hard to pull off in real life. The white circles along her legs are also very nice and evocative of the Kirby design. I don't love the headpiece, but it works fine. It all comes together like what a Thor fan would design if they were creating a costume in tribute to his. The hammer she created for herself makes me think of Stormbreaker, which is smooth and gold in the comics, and that all brings together a generally solid distaff counterpart to Thor design. It works, and it's more unique than just another Asgardian. Not to knock Valkyrie, while staying more firmly a superhero rather than characters like Thor's granddaughters. I certainly wouldn't mind her being the resonant muscle on a team, but with so much power buried under the surface in her default form that I could see it narratively defanging any potential drama. Still, she has a cool look and an interesting dynamic, but only a handful of appearances. However, next time, we're gonna be talking about a different lady who's been mistaken for a goddess, but until then, stay super, man. Hey, this is the part where I thank you for watching the video. I would also like to ask you all to like and subscribe and do all the YouTube stuff that helps the algorithm put us in front of more eyeballs because I, I like that this channel has been growing and I really appreciate everyone who has contributed to that. If you like the show, you should check out the podcast that goes along with it, by the way. It's called Men of Steel. It's on certainpov.com. If you want to dip your toe into it, we've been putting out clips here on this YouTube channel. So check those out under the Minutes of Steel playlist. Uh, but check out all the stuff that we're working on at certainpov.com. Some of it is me, but there's a lot of great creators I'm working with over there. And they're just awesome people that you should check out their work. And otherwise, just have a great week.